Ohio gozaimasu. It's 8.48 p.m. <laughs> this is not the morning. November 4th, I will be uploading this after the Japanese video. But anyway, my name is Mark. Welcome to the October Reading Ramble. A couple days late, probably a week and a bit now. Motivation doesn't exist and it's annoying. On the bright side, I passed the fourth attempt on the Maka in four today. I got a 50%. And I feel good enough to actually have a positive energy. Today, we're gonna talk about a couple books I read in October. Wow, it feels like so long ago. A lot to say in the book called War of Art, very epic. Really hit me at a good time and I'll talk more about that. Been reading some visual novels in English, a lot of them. So, uh, you know, maybe you're reading Ramble as someone who's like, a, who comes here often. I don't know, if you do, if you don't, whatever. If you're new, subscribe, that would be great. But otherwise, let's get into it. I literally just have not been reading it because it's a physical book. <laughs> I've got like a quarter of it left. First book I finished in October was called Into the Wild. Oh, I moved my bookshelf, so now we have a better background. Into the Wild. That book was pretty good. Uh, it's actually, apparently it's pretty popular. I covered the first chunk in the last reading ramble, it appears. The book is about a guy who just kind of threw away all of his material possessions, went to live in the Alaskan wilderness and then, and then died. Some things you gotta prepare for, you know? I would like to go to Alaska, but it's likely going to be sta staying in an Airbnb for a weekend to see the Northern Lights or something cool like that. Go off the grid, put my phone away, but not that. But yeah, it was a little heart-wrenching to kind of hear the experience of people losing someone that's close to them. I mean, I, I, I've read about that in a lot of contexts, but it's just, it's difficult because the, I don't know, the different perspectives, the, the way you can touch people just if you know them for a short amount of time. You're just some random guy going to Alaska from like Arizona and you're just talking to these people who all have these wonderful things to say about you. He gets you. It inspired a, a sense of adventure for sure. I, I want to do a lot more traveling and you know, I had the opportunity, remote work. I'm not much of a tourist, but if I go somewhere, I can still work from there. That's my little, not thesis, but ethos uh, of 2023 is going to be traveling and just work when I'm, you know, not in the US. The character McCandless seeks this freedom and in my opinion, it was a lot of arrogance. I don't think that's a debated thing about this book, but there's a part of me that kind of relates with that, but I'm also someone who does follow the rules. I'll break them, but it's usually more of a pain to break them than it is to follow them. Kind of listen to that little arrogant voice, the thing that just wants to do everything. Then there's a book called How to Disappear. It's in my giveaway bin. Not a good sign, I know. I got through the introduction, I wasn't all that. I, I think so, this book it attracted me because it was like how to disappear and not be, you know, so present in the world. And to me, that meant like how to fly under the radar sort of, but it was more about being detached from like social media and, and the world and, and not being all caught up in things. And I think I'm healthily detached. You know, I've been on Twitter so much today <laughs> reading about all the Twitter crap. I just think it's fascinating. Not the politics, I don't care about politics. I'm gonna read this, I'd rather just read more, not hardcore, but more minimalistic things. It also struck me as a book where like, if you like this author and the way they write, you'd probably like their writing. You'd, you know, it's one of those books where it's like, oh, I like this person's message. I'm going to read what else they wrote. And, and I think if you're someone who obsesses over likes and you find yourself really attached to social media, uh, your phone or texting people or constant communication, I would recommend it. Even though I made it no further than the introduction, it really seemed like it was that kind of book. Every At the end of every reading ramble, I put forth the books I'm going to read. And then I find new books. Uh, this one is what I talk about when I talk about running. I got it on the old Kindle. Got this new Kindle case and so now I can stand it up. Very epic. Some $10 are way more useful than other $10. Oh, it's by Haruki Murakami. That's a pretty important detail. I have started running a lot. I, I hurt this shoulder about two years ago now, wow. And this shoulder in May, I tried boxing a few weeks ago and that was like not a good idea. I've been running a lot. And I started running when I first entered this shoulder. I ran in high school for, for skiing when there's no snow, we have to do something. I mean, it hasn't been going the best, but I've been getting really into it because I started bad, too high intensity, too fast. I was going to PT for a sprained ankle. I could still run in it. It wasn't really a, a bother. It still has a little tweaks here and there, but in the last video, in another video, I talked about um, uh, ready to run, good book. I, I have another book like that. Oh, no structure to these, I apologize. A little bit of organized chaos. I related a lot to a lot of the things that he says. He is a novelist. You're being very creative in that position. And to me, you know, I'm a full-time software engineer. I work in ad tech. So it's not like the one most creative thing. I'm, you know, I'm here because it's got some really interesting problems to solve. I won't lie. And I enjoy that. But to me, software is also creation. And, you know, I think it's a good thing that I didn't go into or try to go into game development or anything, because when your hobby and what you want to do becomes your job, it just shifts things. And, you know, I'm not actively working on a game. The Twitter app I'm slowly working on and was making a devlog for, I might just drop because it might not be worth pursuing Twitter and then find a way to use Golang for something else. That's a whole other thing. Point is, I'm running now 
And this book came up, it was a Murakami. I went for it. I'm a huge fan of memoirs. I'm about 81% through and I just like it. Murakami's just got this very warm way of writing. I have never read his other, I read one of his other books. It didn't really click with me. It was my freshman year of college year. So I never tried to pick him up again. But after this, uh, it's definitely on the list there. Yeah, there were some parts I related. I guess he discussed like choosing to be a hermit, like closed in. And I've related to that a lot being here. You know, I've made a few friends, like one-on-one -on -one friends, but I would still love to find like a group of people. Uh, and you know, maybe there's hope for that, but we'll see. I don't have too much there. He does talk about running marathons. And I think originally my goal was to try and work as a sprinter. So to run a mile in the four minute range, uh, that is to say four to like 4.30. I don't, I doubt I could ever hit four, but now I want to do long distance. I'm trying to learn how to run as, as a passive thing almost. And running has been, I feel like I can talk about running so much, learn in PT, but like I have flat shoes, barefoot shoes, and I've gotten used to them. My left shin, I have shin splints. I'm not like the end of a recovery plan. It kind of flares up sometimes, but it's not, it's on the healing road, if you will. <clears throat> yeah, the next one is Classroom of the Elite. I watched the anime, loved it. I like the the puzzles, the, the figuring out the behavior stuff that goes on. And so I started reading the light novels. I, I read, 10 volumes in the last five weeks. I don't know how many pages that is. I'm sure like this is a sort of online light novel. It, this is in Japanese though. So I don't know what that translates to because in Japanese, you know, one one character can, can be a five letter word, right? Maybe not right. But if you want to know more about my Japanese progress, go watch that other video. You should do that. Oh, oh, and one thing I did want to say, like I should approach reading these in Japanese because I think right now reading has three tiers for me. There's the books that are like Mitch Rapp, I've talked about in the past. These, these light novels, you know, in English that are kind of like, you can just easily read them and get into the action because my reading speed in English is perfectly fine. And then there's the, the more difficult book. So what I talk about when I talk about running, you know, it's not like a difficult book on the same level of works of love, but it's more, I don't want to say cerebral. That sounds weird, but it's, it's a memoir. It's more thoughtful. It, it, you want to connect with it more. I got a book called Steppenwolf after same friend who reminded me of War of Art. We were talking about Herman Hesse and I was like, you know, I should read Steppenwolf. That's the three tiers, right? No, and then there's Japanese. So for me, at least. These reads that are easy because they're enjoying, they're gripping. And then you have the books that are still in English. You can still read them easily, but they're more thoughtful. And then you have Japanese books, which is difficult, <laughs> very difficult. My point is I should be sitting down and reading Japanese. So, oh yeah, Classroom of the Elite. It's made me think about the writing style because some of the translations I'm using are fan translations and they can be kind of literal. Okay, I'm still digressing from the point. Classroom of the Elite. It's one of those books where I really enjoy it. And all of a sudden I should be doing that in Japanese. It's just that, that difficulty barrier. And I've, I've experienced a lot in the last week and a half, especially, but starting something is so difficult. It's sitting down to edit has been super tough. Sitting down to read sometimes is super tough. Sitting down to do my Japanese vocab, but it's so hard, so difficult to sit down and start. But once I get into a vocab session, it's easy. 40 minutes of listening practice ends up being, dare I say, enjoyable. And when you sit down to read, you know, I want it to be a chill time, but you kind of have, for me, I don't know, I have to be in this, this middle zone now reading these easy books. All of that about starting, beautiful segue into The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Did not expect this book to be the format it was in when I first opened it. And that format is just these little, these little tidbits. It's not some productivity book like Atomic Habits uh, or Deep Work explaining all these concepts to you. I have so many bullet points. I think the fact that this hit me at a time where I'm feeling this, this battle with resistance and resistance is defined as, as you know, that force that makes you procrastinate in, in, in the, in the art of war. I'm going to say war of art. Oh my God, I just did it. The war of art. I'm going to say art of war by accident. I'm so sorry. You know, that, that thing that says, no, 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 grab a snack real quick. Oh, one more episode. You know, that's resistance to following your dream or what you want to do. Whether it's a Twitter app or Japanese reviews, I know I'm going to have to do. I've got to do these reviews. The time is going to pass anyway. I can say as many of these things as I want, but you got to sit down and do it and beat the resistance. There's a quote here. Uh, what finally convinced me to go ahead was simply that I was so happy not going ahead. I was developing symptoms. As soon as I sat down and began, I was okay. To me, this shouts, you know, don't be comfortable. You know, seek comfort, seek happiness. But uh, if you're in comfort too long, then that's a bad thing. For Japanese lately, I've been studying for the N3 exam that I'm taking in December. I just finished the N4 today, it's November 4th. I'm like five to six days behind. I've already been studying for the N3, but it's comfortable studying for this exam that I kind of become familiar with. I know what kind of grammar they're going to ask for. And I know all that. I'm really forcing myself to jump into N3, the fight against resistance. So I, I had a difficult day last Friday. Today is the other Friday. I don't know, just mental battles going back and forth. I'm doing all right. It's just one of those things where 
I felt stagnant. Today, I, I finally feel pretty good because I passed this exam and the progress kind of snuck up on me and that felt great. The fact that this book, I read it at this time was huge. I read Deep Work at a time where, yeah, I had already instrumented some principles of deep work and I still kind of do it. If I had read this book a year ago, it would have been like, oh yeah, the resistance, procrastination, okay. Resistance and happiness, that sums it up. You know, at some point, if the resistance is really heavy, really much like a burden, the main thing I focused on was just not falling into my vices. I have a lot to say about vices, but like, you know, I'm on keto right now, it's not breaking keto. The rule of thumb for resistance and fear, uh, you kind of got to leave no room for negotiation. And I've been really, really bad at that lately. But with resistance, you really gotta make rules. I think this viewpoint can be taken too far. I think you, sh you shouldn't live life purely by rules. Let emotions factor in, right? Pressfield does talk a little bit about, uh, I guess this this holy notion, angels and, and the muses. I think it's a great metaphor for the point he's trying to make. There's this concept called pronoia. I wanna make sure I don't get this, this wrong. I think I read about it in the context of nihilism. Pronoia describes a state of mind that is the opposite of paranoia. A person suffering from paranoia feels that persons or entities are conspiring against them. A person experiencing pronoia believes that the world around them conspires to do them good. Anyway, the point is, I'm not someone who's gonna go into the world and be like, manifest and you'll succeed, you know, just smile, be happy and you'll be happy. But I do think that if I spend, and this happened to me, if I spend the amount of time to make one video a week, eventually one of those videos is gonna do well. The universe is conspiring to, to make sure that as I make those consistent videos, that typing video I make explodes. But the holy notion is just like the fact that what you've done, what you have yet to create exists in this holier plane. You're just the instrument for it to, to come out. I thought that was very cool, beautiful, artistic. There's something to be said for, you can believe something and then you can believe something is real. If something drives you, let it drive you, but you don't have to believe that it's real. You know, let's say I make a video that uh, is like the biggest thing and helps every single person learn Japanese. It's impossible that there's always one thing that's gonna work for everybody, no matter what the topic. I don't believe that already exists. It's a, it's a human way to visualize, and I said that generally, but to conceptualize what you're working towards. That's a question I've been suffering with as well, and suffering with. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I've been suffering with that question. What am I working towards? What's my dream? What's my end goal? I don't really have one. Next year, I wanna, again, do product every month. If I can commit three hours to Japanese every day, Imagine what I could pump out a little code wise, huh? If that belief drives you, then let it drive you. You don't have to believe it's real. I've made a VGT on manifestation, I believe. Two more here. There's a weird notion about starting the day you finish the next, the, the last thing. In other words, if I'm writing an essay and I have another essay due, hand in the essay and immediately start the next one. The author was like, you know, he finished a book and then the person was like, good job. Now start the next one today. You know, I passed the M4 exam today. I'm jumping into N3 vocab. That's the kind of energy we like to see. Breaks are good, don't get me wrong, but breaks shouldn't come as a reward. I think I'm just establishing this belief now, so forgive me. A break from work is a good, good thing, but don't do it after you accomplish something. I don't know, I'll think about that some more. And lastly, I've been thinking a lot about the saying or the quote, never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it, the time will pass anyway. This has been getting me through reviews. It's, it's kind of a depressing quote, I'm not gonna lie. It implies that what you're currently doing, you get no enjoyment out of, but I think that's true. I don't particularly enjoy looking at Anki and going through 53 new words, 54 words to, to learn because I've gotten them wrong, and 255 words to review. You know, that part I don't particularly enjoy. However, the time is gonna pass anyway. And if one year passes and I'm still thinking, oh, I wanna learn Japanese, that kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like, oh man, I really wished I watched all those episodes of My Hero Academia on time. Those can wait. I'm really good at making those things wait when it comes to people, but when it comes to what I enjoy, the resistance strikes. It strikes hard. Anyway, uh, Pressfield talks about this idea that you are a vessel. In a, in a sense, it's kind of like a loose idea of reincarnation where you are doing the best you can for your next life. But I just took that to mean I'm doing now for who I'm gonna be in two years. Kind of want to become a frog in my next life. Uh, so maybe I'll just start running to make sure my, my frog legs are extra beefy. <laughs> that was one of the weirdest things I've ever said. <laughs> Whew. Build yourself as a vessel so the next version of you, the next version of the self will be established on those accomplishments. All right, reading ramble. Those are the books I finished in October. That effectively sums up to, you know, I'm not counting the light novels on Goodreads, too much of a guilty pleasure. But now here's what I am reading lately. I did read a little bit of letters, Seneca's letters from a stoic. There are too many, too many books going on. 
So on my Kindle for November, I think Steppenwolf. I think it's something I'll maybe connect to. I don't think as relatively young as I am, I meant to connect to it, but whatever. I got these two books. One's called, well, they're samples. One's called Deathbound, one's called the Running Revolution. My body is just breaking. <laughs> my left knee feels weird. And I'm starting to, I wanna read more of these books that are about you know, if I'm gonna spend all day at my desk, maybe I should move the standing thing back here to the computer I use. The things I can do to make sure I maintain my body because the body is a mechanism. It needs to be maintained. It's not really affecting me now, but it's it's still something to keep in mind. Yeah, so Steppenwolf, uh, finishing what I talk about when I talk about running. I don't think I'm gonna touch on it next next reading ramble. I would love to make a video about running though. I feel like I'm reading 20 books right now because like of the Japanese stuff. I'll just set an arbitrary goal. This might change. Um, I mean, David Goggins has a book coming out. I think it's December though. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to mix up books that are recommended to me a while ago or that I added a while ago and books that are recommended to me lately because it ends up just being like a queue of books and you know, you lose the incentive to read them uh, if they're on the list for too long. Uh, if the sample for Deathbound is any good, I'll do that. I kind of gave up on Toradora, didn't I? Uh, the Folk Tales book, I've not been reading these as I should have been. I've been doing exam reading practice. Yeah, that's, that's it. Some life tidbits and or channel stuff. I don't really care. I really want to read Dostoevsky, the brothers Karasimov, I might, Karamazov, every time. I tried to learn Russian a while ago. I did about for about three months. My Cyrillic is still pretty fine, but so I wanted to read the original Dostoevsky. And then I was like, this is gonna take me 12 years. But then I was reminded of it again. This video might be the only video of November, just like the reading ramble was for October, pretty much. I'll have the last Japanese video up and then this one. It's just been tough. The vlogs, they're kind of, they've kind of been iffy. They haven't really been happening, if I'm being honest. I delete a lot of the footage because there's no story going on. It's just me in my day-to-day -day life. And my day of the life would be incredibly boring. I have some pro productivity videos maybe coming up. Something about running would be cool. There's a typing, two typing videos on here that I just need to put together. You know, I'm almost a year overdue on a video for this. And you know, the home run, home run was a lie. I have all the ideas written out. But I haven't, I don't want to know, if, I don't know if I want to say I haven't been able to sit down and put the videos together. You know, my life priorities, which have always been very difficult for me to, to define, have easily been my full-time job and, and other development. Japanese, two to three hours a day at this point, running. Although to be fair, I could be spending more time on mobility because I can't run sequential days right now. And on there, I have written content creation. Lately, it's kind of been like, where does the time go? I don't know. But Japanese has really been showing me that I'm kind of good at putting my head down and when it needs to be done, it can get done. I'll sit down at some point and define what the heck I can use as a good deadline for these videos. That's a bit too much of a ramble ramble. The point is the videos that'll come out are probably going to be documenting, not creating. So like that last Japanese video that came out before this one, I wanna just document things. If I can, volitionally, if I can, when you turn the camera on, inevitably you become someone else. If you care, there you go. Still wanna make YouTube videos. I don't know why. I think I've just done it so long, it feels like it's a part of my life. I would like some books to be read in Japanese because once I take this exam, pass or fail, I'm gonna be learning to speak and read and write and hear <laughs> the link. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a like down below. If you are interested in any of these books, uh, go to your local bookstore, find them there because that's, that's pretty great. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. I will see you in the next reading ramble.